So you've seen those really cool Insta360 ONE X videos and you've decided you may want to get one. But is it really the best 360 camera that you can get? In this Insta360 ONE X review for 2019, we're going to compare the Insta360 ONE X against other 360 cameras. So first, I'm going to share with you the real reason 360 camera reviewers recommend the Insta360 ONE X. Then we're going to talk about other 360 cameras and there are a ton of them. So it can be a little bit confusing to determine which one's the best one for you. But I have a unique systematic approach and I promise you, I'm going to help you find the best 360 camera for your needs. And the answer is going to be very clear and easy to understand. I'm also going to show you some new 360 cameras that I bet you haven't seen before. In fact, one of them is so good that it may take over the top spot for its category. First, let's talk about the Insta360 ONE X. I want to talk about why do 360 camera reviewers consistently recommend it over other 360 cameras. So a simple explanation could be affiliate links, right? You could say, hey, Insta360 is giving these guys affiliate links, and so they have an incentive to give it a generous review. So that's a very tempting explanation, but it wouldn't be accurate. How do I know? That's because there are other 360 cameras that also offer commissions. And in fact, some of them offer as much as double the commission on the Insta360 ONE X. But those cameras are not getting recommended. So if it's not because of affiliate links, is it because the Insta360 ONE X is really the best at every category? Well, that's not true either because the Insta360 ONE X is not a perfect camera. It does have several weaknesses. In fact, in my previous video, I talked about seven major weaknesses of the Insta360 ONE X. If you haven't seen that video, you can go check it out over here. If it's not affiliate links and it's not because the ONE X is really the best at everything, then why is it considered the best 360 camera? The reason is that the Insta360 ONE X is either the best or it's really good at almost every category. There's no category where it is weak. It's at worst average in a few categories and for other categories it's really excellent. Because of this, the Insta360 ONE X is the camera that meets the needs of the greatest number of people. So as a 360 camera reviewer myself, if I don't know anything about you and I had to just recommend a camera, then this is the camera that I would most likely recommend because it has the greatest chance of meeting your needs. All right, that kind of makes sense, but what does this have to do with me? So here's the thing. If Insta360 ONE X is the best 360 camera for a lot of users, the flip side of that is that the ONE X is not the best for some users. So depending on your needs, there may be a better 360 camera for you. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next part. So to keep things organized, we're going to talk about the cameras by their intended use for either photos or videos. And for each one, we're going to talk about the best 360 cameras for price or affordability, practicality or ease of use, and performance or image quality. So let's talk about 360 cameras for photos and let's, we're now talking about the more affordable options. So number one is the Xiaomi Mi Sphere. This is if your top priority is affordability and your second priority is quality. The Mi Sphere is an older 360 camera but even in 2019 it still has one of the best in terms of uh, 360 photo quality so it's actually even uh, sharper or more detailed than the Insta360 ONE X. It also has true manual exposure and it also has true raw DNG format. Another affordable option for 360 photos is the GoPro Fusion. At this price range it has the best dynamic range. It also has very good detail despite the lower nominal resolution. The downside is that it doesn't have true manual exposure. It also has a complicated raw workflow. Now if your top priority is price but your second priority is ease of use then check out the Mad V Mini. So this is an affordable 360 camera that's only about a hundred dollars. 
Now the Mad V Mini is a smartphone 360 camera, so you attach it to your phone and uh, you need to check for compatibility. But if you have the compatible smartphone, the Mad V is a great option because it takes pretty good photos um, and it's very, very easy to use. Now let's talk about 360 cameras for photos if your priority is ease of use. Now if you're looking for a 360 camera for photos and you want a high quality then check out the Theta Z1. This is a 360 camera that just came out recently and it has fantastic photo quality and it's also very easy to use. So you could uh, switch to HDR mode and you just press the button and it will take three shots and blend the exposures for you and stitch them for you and it looks fantastic even without editing. Now the Z1 is a little bit expensive, it's like a thousand dollars so if that's too much for your budget uh, but you still want ease of use then check out um, the Theta series of uh, cameras so that's the Theta V, the Theta S and Theta SC. Between the three the V has the best image quality, it has a slightly better um, lens uh, but the others are pretty good as well and all three of them are just like the Theta Z1 can take HDR 360 photos and they'll stitch them and fuse the HDR in camera you don't have to do anything so if you want a 360 camera for photos and you, but your priority is image quality then there are three really good options first of all if your priority is dynamic range um, and workflow then check out the Theta Z1. We've, I, as I mentioned earlier, it has amazing image quality. It has the best dynamic range out of any 360 camera I've tested for photos. Now, although the Theta Z1 has amazing dynamic range and stitching and workflow, it's not the most detailed 360 camera. So if your priority is detail, the, the one that's most detailed right now that I've tested so far is the Aleta S2C but I want you to hold off on buying that because I've just tested a new camera that looks very promising and it looks like it may take the crown it may even be better than the Theta Z1 this is it it's called the X phase it has 25 sensors and each sensor is 8 megapixels BSI CMOS sensor so um, that's the total resolution of 200 megapixels. Uh, by comparison, the previous record holder was the Panono, which had 36 lenses, and each one was 3 megapixels for a total resolution of 108 megapixels. So this is almost double the previous record holder. And I've taken some test shots, and they look really phenomenal. And that's why I wanted to hold off on... Uh, buying a 360 camera for photos if your priority is detail. Now besides detail, the other amazing thing about the X-Phase is the price. It starts at $599. Um, so that makes it far more affordable than the Theta Z1 or the Aleta S2C. So I'll be working on a review of this. Uh, stay tuned. So if you don't want to miss it, hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. So those were 360 cameras for photos. Now let's talk about videos. And if your priority is affordability, then my favorite one would be the GoPro Fusion. So the GoPro Fusion is currently available for $299. And that's amazing because it was first released at um, $699, I believe. And I bought it at full price and I thought it was worth it even at that price. Now at $299, it's a bargain. And uh, to me, it's, this is the strongest alternative to the Insta360 ONE X, which is why we're going to go into a more detailed comparison with it. And now, if $299 is too, still too much, then don't worry. Uh, check out the Yi360 VR. This is currently $199, and uh, it's a 5.7K 360 camera. It still has very good quality. In fact, in 2017, it was second only to the GoPro Fusion and it came out at $399 now it's marked down to $199 uh, because the manufacturer isn't updating it anymore but the image quality is still really good now the big downside to this is that there's no Mac stitcher you gotta have a PC 
and the other thing is it takes a really long time to stitch so even if you have a powerful PC with a uh, with a powerful graphics processor the E360 VR stitching takes a really long time another great option for affordability is the original Insta360 One which is now available for $199 so the Insta360 One is just 4K, but it still has great stabilization. It has most of the features of the Insta360 One X. So if you're if you want something affordable and also easy to use, this is a good option. So now let's talk about 360 cameras for videos. If your priority is practicality and convenience, now if your secondary priority is performance or quality then I recommend the Pilot Era. This is a new 360 camera that's really powerful but it's also very easy to use. Um, so first of all it has a touch screen so it makes it easy to use it. It's like using a smartphone. More importantly it has in-camera stitching with stabilization. So it can stitch at 4K 30fps with stabilization or it can shoot at 8K 24fps and that is not real time but it can stitch that video in camera. So you can stitch that video on your way home and by the time you get home your videos are probably already stitched for you. Now the problem with the Pilot Era is the price. It's $27.99 so that's outside of the budget for most people. So a secondary recommendation if your priority is pr uh, practicality and you also care about performance is the Insta360 ONE X. Now the ONE X does not have in-camera stitching but it does have no stitch workflow uh, on both the smartphone app and the desktop app. So it's close enough to real-time stitching that I can recommend it uh, for both practicality and performance. Now if your priority is practicality and price then there are a couple of 360 cameras that have real-time stitching but are also affordable. First of all is the Yi 360 VR. We talked about this earlier and yes it has 5.7k video that takes a long time to stitch but it has another mode it can shoot at 4k 30fps with real-time stitching and when you do that of course stitching is not a problem at all and at 199 the Yi360 VR is the lowest cost 360 camera that can have real-time stitching. Now another 360 camera with real-time stitching that's also affordable is the 360 Penguin. This is a new 360 camera it can stitch 4K 360 videos and also stitch 360 photos, both of them in real-time stitching. So you don't have to stitch with any software, it will stitch it in camera for you. I have to remind you that both the Yi 360 VR and the 360 Penguin will not add stabilization when you're using real-time stitching. But the Yi 360 VR has an advantage because you can use the desktop app to add stabilization afterward. The stabilization metadata file is included when you record it in real-time stitching. On the other hand, with the 360 Penguin, you don't have the ability to add stabilization later on. You're just stuck with no stabilization. But what you get is that the 360 Penguin has better stitching in real-time stitching mode. So when you're using both in real-time stitching, it's relying on template stitching and the 360 Penguin has lenses that are closer to each other so there's less parallax stitching error compared to the E360 VR. Now let's talk about 360 cameras for performance. In other words, image quality. So first, if you care more about ease of use, then that would be the Insta360 ONE X. The Insta360 ONE X has amazing image quality both for detail and dynamic range especially when you use HDR video mode, a feature that other 360 cameras don't have. It also has a lot of useful features such as super slow motion and time shift and the GPS overlay. And on top of it all, it has the best workflow for both mobile and desktop. If you're looking for a 360 camera that has great image quality and is easy and convenient to use, the Insta360 ONE X is it.
on the other hand if you want to try to save a little bit money then you can get the GoPro Fusion. The GoPro Fusion's image quality rivals that of the Insta 361 X. It doesn't have as many features as the Insta 361 X but its video quality and its photo quality are both excellent. Now, the Fusion however has two weaknesses. First of all is the mobile app. So the app feels unfinished like it's very difficult to export 360 photos and videos for editing in other software. The other problem is the desktop workflow. It's not so much the workflow itself, it's more that um, number one, you'll need a dedicated graphics card. If you don't have one, stitching will take a really long time. The other thing is that when it exports at its maximum resolution of 5.6K or even at 5.2K, it'll export it only in Cineform and ProRes. Those codecs are great because you have very low compression. On the other hand, not a lot of video editors for consumers can edit them. So if you have Premiere, great, you have no problems. But if you have consumer grade software, you won't be able to edit those files. So both of these cameras have really good image quality and they each have different sets of advantages. Now I've done a 40 factor comparison between the two of them. Check out this video. After I made that video, they each made significant improvements. The Insta 361 X added other improvements such as HDR video and other features, whereas the GoPro Fusion increased the resolution to 5.6K. So in my next video, I'm going to do an updated comparison between the Insta 361 X and the GoPro Fusion in 2019. I'm also going to talk about the next Insta 361 X. When are we likely to see it and what features is it probably going to have? I'm going to try to get the video out tomorrow, which usually means uh, two days after that. Don't miss it, just hit subscribe and I'll see you in three. 360.